Well, good morning. How's everybody feeling this morning? Is that mic really hot or is it just me? <laughs> well, I just want to welcome you in this morning. You know what? I, I told first service, I'm going to tell you guys too. When I come here on Sundays, it's like a family reunion to me. You know, I love you guys. I'm praying for you guys during the week. And I just pray that you're lifting up the leadership here too because we need that just as well. So, But this morning, I'm going to start off with a scripture this morning. In Psalm 63, 1. In Psalm 63, 1, it says, Oh God, you are my God. Right there alone is enough for us just to worship and have a good time because I'm thankful that I got a God that I can call upon. But it says, Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. That's, that's a complete hunger for who he is. That dry, and, that dry and bare land, that's anything outside of the presence of God. That's anything out of his presence, his glory, his fullness. It says, I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Now, when it says sanctuary, it's not talking about right here. Again, it's talking about anything outside the presence of God. When you're in the presence of God, you, you witness the power and the glory of who he is. Amen. Can you agree with me on that? So this morning, are you ready to quench the thirst? Are you ready for that hunger to be quenched as well as we enter into worship this morning? Because that's what we're going to do. We're going to acknowledge him. We're going to worship him. We're going to exalt him this morning. Let's worship. Amen. Amen. Are you 
glad he's doing great things in your life this morning. Mike, I need a little more guitar, please. We're in the Father's house, right? What happens in the Father's house? Miracles happen in the Father's house. best part. The prodigals come home, helpless find hope. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. The prison doors swing wide, dead come to life. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Lift it up! Miracles take place. The cynical find faith.
your son for redemption, the price for my heart. I don't have a context for that kind of love. I don't understand. glad this morning that we have a father we can run to. I think back, you know, to my natural physical father and any time I ever ran to him his arms were open wide and he accepted me just how I was, right or wrong because he was my father he was my dad 
to think how much more our Heavenly Father loves us. Can't comprehend, can't understand that kind of love. But I can tell you this morning, it's real. You see, He never left us. He never left us. We walked away. And the great thing is, just like the prodigal son when he came home, He's there waiting, ready to receive us. And all He wants us to do is just to run to Him. He just wants us to run as hard as we can into His arms and fall into His grace and His love. I can't explain that. But I know I, I love those times when we just run to Him. We just run to Him. Run to the Father, fall in the grace. you're there, God, in my time of need. But God, I ask today that you would help us to recognize that you're always there. Not just in our time of need, God, but in our time of joy, in our time of experience of great things, Father. You're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. You're never changing, but help us to focus on you, God. Help us to understand what you have in mind for us, not what we have. As I said, outside these doors, there's chaos. There's confusion, there's issues. But in the arms of the Father, it's running to life from death. And I thank you, God, for who you are. I thank you for that, Father. Amen. I tell you what, God is here today. Just soak in his presence. Just because we're transitioning to another part of the service doesn't mean you have to lose what you've already gained. Don't go backwards. Keep pushing forward. Keep pushing through the situation. Keep pushing through everything that's going on, all those obstacles, and run to him, all right? We're going to be back in just a few minutes with a good word from Pastor Mike. That all you have been me, Jesus, bring Faces down to the ground in your presence, Lord, with our tears we wash your feet, we bow low, we bow low, falling on our knees, we bow low, we bow low.
everybody. We're so glad you're here with us. Wasn't worship awesome? If you're new here to Life Church Sex, we would love to get to know you. One way to get to know us is to fill out one of our red cards. If you're in our sanctuary today, you can get it in the chair back in front of you. If you're watching online, if you just give us a hand wave emoji, one of our leaders will contact you. If Life Church X is your church home, now is your opportunity to give. You can give in one of four ways. You can give online at our website at www.lifechurchx.com. You can download our mobile app. You can text the, to give the number to 84321, or you can write out a check to Life Church X and mail it in to 400 Park Street, Waterloo, Illinois, 62298. Or if you're with us in service, you can drop it off in the containers in the back of the sanctuary. I pray that as you give, that God will bless you abundantly and meet all of your needs as it says in his word. God bless you. Have a great day. And here's the message. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Everybody looks lovely. We welcome our online campus with us this morning. We're glad you joined us. It's good to be here, isn't it? Man. Well, this weekend, uh, actually yesterday, Pastor Matt and Pastor Katie celebrated their 17th wedding anniversary. Yeah. That's a long time, isn't it? Can you imagine what Pastor Katie's been through? She's shaking her head, yeah. I mean, you've heard those stories when, so, you know, when you hear of somebody do something great or whatever, and you say, man, that, that man or woman, she has a direct ticket to heaven, right? You've heard people say that? Well, I mean, that, that's like Pastor Kay, like putting up with Pastor Matt. I mean, she has a one-way express ticket to heaven. I know I'll pay for that later, but it sure was fun. <laughs> well, good morning. I'm going to be speaking a message this morning about hearing God's voice. And the title of my message this morning is Voices and Choices. And here's what I mean by that. That as you're probably aware, that we have hundreds of voices that are trying to infiltrate our minds, our souls, our spirit, our life. Like it could be, and people that mean well, it could be friends, it could be a parent, a spouse, a mentor, a teacher, and they don't, mean, they don't mean it derogatory, but it's just, you know, hundreds of voices, when in reality, for our Christian life, there's only one voice that, that really matters as far as the direction we should take our life, and that's the voice of Jesus Christ. So voices and choices means there's hundreds of voices coming in, and the choices part is that I have, for my own individual life, I have the choice. No one else is making the choice with me. No circumstance I'm going through, no situation I'm going through de defines the choice that I make. It is entirely up to me, the choice I make for my life as far as what and who I'm going to be listening to you. And I'll tell you up, I'll tell you up front this morning that a lot of the things you're going to hear from me are probably not going to be new to you. You'll probably be thinking, yep, I, I've heard that before. That, that sounds right. I, I agree with Pastor Mike. But, but my goal today is to convince you, convince you beyond the shadow of a doubt that God speaks to you individually all the time. That's my goal for today. And I'm going, to, I'm going to make a couple assumptions on why you're here today, because I think it kind of sets the ground rule, a level playing field of why we're all here. A couple assumptions of why we're here. Number one, actually number one is you're here because you thought Pastor Matt was going to be here. But set, set, set that aside, Pastor Matt's not here, you're just going to have to deal with me for the next 35, 40 minutes. But a couple assumptions. Number one, you came in here because you were wanting something. There's something in your life that you're missing. There's questions in your life that you're trying to answer. What is my calling? Why am I here? What's my purpose? 
You might just be thinking to yourself, there has got to be something more to this life. Or you're in a second category where you kind of know some of those things. You know what God's called you to do. You know what your purpose is. But you're just trying to maximize everything that God is speaking to you. And I'd also ask you to think about these questions in your own life as we're, as we're moving forward today. Are you flourishing in your life? Are you thriving? Are you happy? Are you fulfilled? Do you have a sense of peace in your life? Do you have a sense of joy in your life? And if you're sitting there thinking, well, I'm not real sure how to answer those questions, or it's yes to some, no to others, part of my message today is to convince you that all those things can be fulfilled in your life by listening to the voice of God and following the voice of God and what he's telling you to do. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to come together as fellow Christians and sons and daughters of you to come together and celebrate what you're doing in this church, to celebrate what you're doing in our individual lives and have the opportunity to read your word and meditate on these scriptures and hear directly from you. And Lord, I just ask that as you bless these people here this morning, that you'd, be, you'd open minds and hearts and ears all over this place to receive your divine revelation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, just what I just talked about there, there, there's lots of ways you can move forward in your life. You can learn from friends, mentors, teachers, a spouse, a family member, parent, uh, pastor, some sort of spiritual authority in your life. Those are all great things, but none of those things trump the voice of God in your life. And that was not a political statement right there, sorry. <laughs> The only reason it's stuck in my mind because I, in opening this message in the first service, I said, what I'm trying to do is vote. I'm trying to get you to vote for your lives in listening to God. And somebody came up to me and said, hey, was that a subliminal message to vote? And I'm like, no, it's just the word I use. But now that you're, now that you're bringing up the subject, it wasn't a subliminal message. I'm telling you to vote <laughs> because that's not even a political statement. It's an American statement. We've earned the right to vote and we should. So sorry about that. But... There's lots of good people around us, good mentors, spiritual mentors, spiritual authority, but it never trumps hearing the voice of God. In the book of Matthew, verse 15, verse 10, when Jesus has called the multitudes to them and he has people gather around him, he simply says in verse 10, hear and understand. It's voices and choices. In verse 13, he goes down and he says, but he answered and said, every plant which my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted. Every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted. Translate into this message today, every direction that you take, every, direct, every step forward you take, take forward in your life, that is not that may work out and may be good for a time being, but if it is not from God, at some point, it will be uprooted. At some point, it, it'll be gone. At some point, you'll be sitting there holding that thing in your hand saying, how did I get into this situation? This was a good idea. Yeah, it might have been a good idea, but it wasn't a God idea. There's a big difference between living your life with a bunch of good ideas and living your life with a bunch of God ideas. And if you're like me, many times in your life you might get busy and you're going from thing to thing to thing, and you, you go a day or maybe even a week and you stop to think, wait a minute, I've never asked God for his input in my life. I've never taken the time to stop and ask God, what would he want me to do in this situation? You know, years ago, there was those bracelets that said, uh, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Those are great. It's an awesome reminder. Look down on your wrist and say, what would Jesus do? But I think of another one that it should say, WIGS, what is God saying? 
Because wouldn't that be a powerful, powerful statement of your life if every time you had, you had a question or every time you ran into trouble or any time you needed some direction, you'd look down on your wrist and you'd be reminded, what is God saying? What is God telling me to do? Not that there's obviously anything wrong with what would Jesus do, but when you're in a moment of, say, crisis or in a moment of decision, you don't really have time to maybe reflect back on Scripture or think about a Bible story or think about what Jesus would do in that situation. Because in some sense, and please take this in context, in some sense, it doesn't matter what Jesus would do. It matters what you're going to do. And the best way to figure out what that is, is if I know what God is telling me to do, all I need to do is take a step. Think of it this way. Do you really think Jesus Christ, the King of kings, Lord of lords, would really steer you in a wrong direction? Do you really think he would give you a piece of bad advice, so to speak? We have to be in a constant pursuit, in a constant, almost like learning environment of God speaking to us. And in learning and education in life, there, there's two primary ways to learn. There's visual learning and there's audible learning. Some, some people live, I'm sorry, um, learn better visually. Some people learn better audibly. But one of the things I'm going to talk about today is I, I believe that when it comes to Christ and following his direction, it's the audible learning that has to kick in. But we are visual learners. When we become Christians, we, we get a Bible, we download a Bible app, so we have our physical Bible, we read the scripture, we read about the stories, we memorize the scriptures, we meditate on them, we pray on them, we take notes, and we apply it, we apply it to our life. That's being a visual learner. But I want to just submit this idea to you, and please keep, keep these comments in context of what I'm talking about today, is that the Bible is not really set up in your life for you to be a visual learner. It's training you to be an auditory learner. Because when you become, when you get into that point in your life or that your day that you have to make a decision in a moment, you don't have time, lots of times, you don't have time to go grab your Bible and get into some scriptures. I don't have time to call Pastor Guy and see what he thinks I should do. I don't have time to, to go to a prayer group and get some direction. I need to be in a situation. I need to have a lifelong communication and intimate relationship with God. When I come to that moment, God is speaking to me. Another way, I would refer to it as being prayed up. Like one of the, one of the ways I try to live my life is always being prayed up. So I've prepared myself, I've read my Bible, I've communicated with God, I've been in fellowship with Him, I've been in relationship with Him. So when I come to that deciding moment of something going on in my life, I've prepared myself and I'm prayed up and I have the ability and the wherewithal and the opportunity for God to speak to me and to me to take action. Because when you think about it, we have to live that way because the, the Bible, being a visual learner, is not really going to help me navigate my life in those very specific situations. But, it's, but the Bible helps us learn to hear God's voice, to recognize God's voice in our life, to be able to identify and understand what he's telling us to do. I think we would all agree in one thing this morning, that we would all agree that God's voice is important. Would we not? But here I think sometimes in our own individual lives, here's the, let's say, the trap that we fall into. We believe that God's voice is important, and we would second that. We would say we would believe God is always speaking to the world at large, to the church at large. He's speaking to the spiritual authority in various churches, and he's speaking to and through our senior pastors, Pastor Matt and Katie. And it stops there. Sometimes, even though we believe all that, we fail to realize that God is speaking to us individually all the time. 
all the time. So as, as we unpack this this morning, I'd ask you to listen to it in this context. The rest, the rest of this morning when we talk about it, what I'm talking about is specifically God speaking to you, to each one of us. So don't hear something I'm saying, but wait, that, that's great, that's awesome, that's encouraging. God is really speaking in the church. That's not what I'm talking about. Don't be thinking, boy, that, that is awesome. I, I am so excited. God, God's voice is speaking to the world and spiritual authority leaders. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about God is speaking to each and every one of us individually in just the correct and the right way so that we as our individual people have the ability to understand and to hear and to take in his word. And if we would believe that the gospel has changed everything, right? As you're, we as Christians, I think we would agree on that as well, that the gospel has changed everything. And if we believe the gospel has changed everything, we and our own personal lives have to be included in that statement, right? If the gospel, if the power of Jesus Christ has changed everything, that means he's changed you and I as well. And the, almost the entire theme of the Bible is that when God speaks, it changes everything. Because when God speaks, things happen. And when God speaks, things are created. And when God speaks and God creates things, he gives and brings life. And again, what I'm talking, I'm talking about he speaks, makes things happen in your life. He creates things in your life and he gives your life a living, breathing thriving life. That's, that's what God is. That's who he is. It's the entire story of the Bible. It's the entire theme of the Bible. John 1, 1 through 5. And I'm going to give you some scriptures here pretty quickly that kind of proves my point. Because what I'm talking about, this whole, con, this whole theme of, of God speaking to you, it's not just what's being talked about now in religious spiritual, spiritual circles. It's not just a theory that I have. It's, it's, it's talked about in Scripture after Scripture after Scripture. John 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Proverbs 6, verse 9. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. See, we have skin in the game. We don't just wait around, sitting around aimlessly waiting for God to speak. When we start to move, when we, when we start to move forward, that's when God speaks. When we start to plan our way, God directs our steps. Genesis 1, verse 3, then God said, let there be light, and there was light. When God speaks, things are created. Verse 9, then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. Verse 11, then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was so. I hope to get to the point of my life that whenever God calls me home and on my tombstone, maybe right underneath my name, it just says, God spoke to Mike Lemp, XXX, and it was was so. Can you imagine if we lived our lives like that? Can you imagine at the end of a lifetime or a month or a week or even a day, if you could go home and say, when God told me this, dot, 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 it was so. Ezekiel 12, 25, for I am the Lord, I speak, and the word which I speak will come to pass. It will no more be postponed for you in your days, O rebellious house, I will say the word and perform it. Amos 1, 2, 
The Lord roars from Zion and utters his voice from Jerusalem. Amos 3, verses 7, verses 7, verse 7. Surely the Lord does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. John 10, 27, 28. This will be the last one, and I, I could stand up here all day long and convince you of the fact that God speaks. John 10, 27 through 28. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. And if these verses, if God speaking, God creating, God making things happen, God giving life, but that's the theme of the entire Bible that God speaks and creates, that has to be the theme of your individual life as well. Hearing his voice, following his commands. If you just, I'll throw this out there today and you may agree, disagree, I'm not even sure I should say this, but if you look at the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments, as holy as those things are, and we try to keep those, when you think about it, I'd encourage you to do this. Go home and read the Ten Commandments, and then ask yourself, are, are they really that hard to keep? Test yourself when you get home. Are they really that hard to keep? And I'll tell you how this works, because this works, in my opinion, much like the rest of your life works. The first commandment is, I will love, I love my God with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, right? Something like that, right? If you get that one right, guess what happens to the rest of them? They just kind of work out. It's the same thing with our lives. If we can get a few things right, the, the important ones, like hearing God's voice and following his voice and direction, I'll just say it this way. Things just have a way of, hap- of working themselves out. And you can, you can say, that's God leading me. You can say it's a coincidence. You can say it's just luck. Hey, as Christians, we all know what it is. It's God intervening in our life and we being obedient and trusting his direction. Amen? That was point number one, the power of God's voice in your life. I think I forgot that. And I believe this is a pivotal moment in our world, in the life of any church, in pivotal moment in our lives to where As individuals, we need to figure out, am I going to respond to God's call for my life? Am I really all in on this, or is this something that I just kind of show up to church or tune in online because it makes me feel better, like I can check a box that I did did church today? Hebrews 12, 25, verse 25, and Hebrews 12 is really the Oh, I don't know, you could call it like the race of faith, some discipline of God, spiritual vitality. But here's what verse 25 says. Verse 25 says, see that you do not refuse him who speaks. Let me say that again. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. This is almost, I don't know, like a final warning Almost like a a verse that you need to stand at attention. Because what it's saying is, no matter what you do, don't refuse God's voice. And what's interesting in this verse, it makes a couple assumptions. It makes the assumption, number one, that God does in fact speak. And then assumption number two, it also says that We have the ability and the choice not to listen. It's our choice. And in a way, that's nothing new. You could say that 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 is the great challenge of all people. 
It's the great challenge of my life. It's the great challenge of your life. It's the great challenge of the people in the Old Testament that when God speaks, we don't listen. When God gives us direction, we don't act. And especially as new covenant believers in the power of God's voice and the power of God's direction for our life, it's crucial. I'm telling you, it is crucial that when God speaks to us, we respond accordingly. Because especially as Bible-believing Christians, when we know the truth and we believe in these things, and we understand the power of God's voice, when we don't act on that, when we don't respond appropriately, I'm accountable for what God has told me to do. I'm accountable for my actions of whether I step forward in faith or I cower back in fear. Where am I on that faith-fear pendulum? Right? We talk about that a lot sometimes just as Christians. I'm moving forward in faith or I have fear. Well, think of it this way. You, you can really only operate in, a, in, in any single moment in one way. So we have to choose. Are we going to operate in faith? Am I going to walk forward in faith? Or am I going to cower back in fear? Point number two. The power of your choices in your life. The power of your choices in your life. And as I just mentioned, the great challenge of people. Also, it moves forward to the the great decision with our lives. For my life, your life, we have a great decision for our lives. And here's what that decision is. The great decision for my life is as a Christian, what is am I going to do with Jesus? For my life, what am I going to do with the voice of Jesus in my life? Is he just going to be one of the hundreds of voices in my life? Or is he going to be the voice in my life? The Alpha, the Omega, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, a name higher than all, higher than any other name, creator of the universe. Am I going to listen to his voice, or is that just going to be one of a hundred voices that I listen to? That has to be the supreme authority in my life. Listen, my wife and I, my wife is obviously the closest human being I have, the most intimate relationship. The most, uh, the clo- she, she knows who I am, what makes me tick, what makes me mad, angry, happy, sad, fulfilled, at peace, whatever. I could go to her for direction in my life, and she could help me out tremendously. But when push comes to shove, when it's, let's just say, her voice in my life versus Jesus' voice, Jesus' voice has to win every time. She may know me intimately well more than any other human being in the world, but there's another guy who created me, who knows every single speck of me. Every, he knows good, bad, indifferent. That's the voice I have to listen to. And guys in the room don't like, don't like try to use that to your advantage on like silly stuff at home. I'm talking about spiritual issues. Like yesterday, my wife said, hey, can you take out the trash? And I was like, no, you know what? God told me to watch football today. (laughs) It doesn't work. We have to listen to God's voice. And I don't really, again, my, my goal today is to convince you that God speaks directly to you. What I won't be able to tell you is how God speaks to you. Because he's going to speak to you in a very individual way that's different for everybody. That's where that intimate relationship, that daily communication with Christ comes in. That's how that's formed. But I'll give you an example for myself, and I kind of hate to admit this, 
because it'll sound like I'm hard-headed or I'm always arguing with God, but here's how this usually works in my life. You know, I'm trying to make a decision, you know, uh, I'm, I'm talking to God, blah, 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 and then here's, here's where it usually comes to. It usually comes to, he'll finally tell me, Mike, I have, get, I have answered every one of your questions. I have shown you the answer to every question. I have spoken to you everything you need. I have sent people into your life that you are totally aware of that has set you up for this moment. I have done everything you've asked me to do, everything you've asked me to show you. Now you need to make a decision. That's usually how it happens. I, hate to, I, wish, I wish I could just say God speaks to me and I do it every time. It's usually, it's a process. And finally God says, finally God will say to me, I've given you everything you've asked for. Now you have to make a decision. You have to make a choice. Voices and choices. I'll give you another example that just happened the other day. We got, I, I was rushing home for work because then as soon as I got home from work, we had to go somewhere else and I wanted to get a quick uh, run in so I could stay in shape, so I could try to get a workout. And I got home, I was changing clothes real quick to get out the door so I could get back, so we could get to wherever we were going. I don't remember. And then she said, oh yeah, Christy said, oh yeah, we had, we had a call for, a, uh, for another foster family this weekend. And I just was like, oh, foster baby. And I was like, oh. And she was like, well, why, what's wrong? And I'm like, oh, nothing. And honestly, I'm thinking to myself, I, I don't have time to do this. I've got like 53 things to do by tomorrow morning, and then I've got this weekend, and I've got this, and I got that. I have no time. And I was like, you know what? And then I kind of snapped out of it. Didn't I? I snapped out of it. Come on, yeah, thanks. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I need to go for a run. And because we have to get where we're going, I just need to, you know, exercise. So I go, and I'm, not, I'm like, I run for like 60 seconds. And then God speaks to me, and he basically says, because I was thinking about the foster baby coming, and so I was thinking, you know, I was thinking about, I really wasn't thinking about the foster baby. I was thinking about the foster baby coming, and then how I was going to rearrange my schedule in order to help out with that. And then, like, kind of thought to myself, wait a minute, I'm kind of, I don't know what I'm, like, belly aching about, because she does 95% of the work anyway, so I'm just being a big baby. And then I, heard, I just heard, I heard just this, in my spirit, God say, say, Mike, after Everything I've ever done for you and have never let you down, you are such an idiot. You still think this is all about you. Now, I'm sure God didn't say idiot, but that's, that's just the way I heard it. I don't know, right? But the point is, even myself, if I've watched God come through time and time and time again, Something comes up as silly as this, and he has to tell me, Mike, you still think this is about you? Now, I know that's happened to somebody else. I'm not the only one. You know, and many times we think, well, why is God silent in my life? And you're probably thinking that now, well, Pastor Mike's talking about God's always speaking, God's speaking this and that, and he's creating things, and he's making things happen. And you're probably thinking, that, well, he never speaks to me. And I go through periods of that too. But trust me, as we've said in these verses, and there's, there's all kinds of additional verses, God is always speaking. What's going on is you're probably not listening. Or God is speaking, but you're expecting him to say something else. Or God is speaking, and you are waiting for what you want to hear. And what happens when we get in these moments, and sometimes they're long seasons. If you look from the, from the point of Mal, the book of Malachi to Matthew, there was like 400 years of God not speaking because the people weren't listening. But what happens when God speaks to us, and maybe we have these prolonged seasons, whether, it, whether it's a week, a month, a year, three years, whenever you come back and you, re, you reconnect with God, he's going to be telling you the same thing because it's your plan for your life. It's his plan for your life. That's the way it works. 
And the power, the power of God's voice in some sense doesn't stand alone in the, in, the, in the power of his voice or what he's telling you. The power in that entire situation is at the intersection of when God speaks and we listen. That's where the power comes in. That's when our life starts to grow. That's when things start to happen. That's when things start to be created in our life. That's when we start to feel that joy and peace and sense of fulfillment and our calling and God's purpose. But sometimes we are like, we're like my kids, or anybody's kids for the most part, right? When your kids are little, they come to you and say, they ask you a question, you give them the answer. And then they come and ask the same question, the same question. And then they kind of vary the question a little bit. It's like, guys, you can come and ask me the same question over and over and over again, but my answer is always going to be the same. See, sometimes with God, we think, we think by running away or, or not answering or not listening, we think we're going to outlast God. You're not going to outlast God. It's not going to happen. We have to get to the point where, man, when God says something to us, we respond. We react. We have to get to the point when, I, when we read our Bible, when I read a scripture, and I think to myself for a second, wait a minute, I'm not sure I agree with that. I have to come to, come to the point where when that happens, I, think, I then think to myself, well, I'm wrong. If I read something in this book and I think, wait a minute, I'm not, I, I kind of disagree with that. I'm wrong. When God speaks to me and tells me to do something, and I'm thinking, wait a minute, I've got some questions. I'm not sure about that. I have to come to the point to realize I'm wrong. He is always going to know what's best for my life. He's never let me down, so I don't know why I have this like almost debate with him, or actually like I'm a lawyer trying to plead my case of why I don't want to do things. He's never let me down. I have no reason to not believe him. I have no reason to believe that this isn't going to work out if I'm really in tune with his will. But sometimes we get screwed up and we take steps forward and we think, wait a minute, God told me to do this and it didn't work out. Well, most likely it's because we're mixed up in the fact that we think we're using God to fulfill the purpose for our life. It's not the way it works. God is using us to fulfill his purposes. God is using us to fulfill his will. In Hebrews 12, if I keep reading it, it would, it would talk about the, the, the shaking. It would talk about when, when the Lord comes back and when we have the Lord's return, the things that we've amassed in this world that maybe are worldly or earthly, they're not going to be here. They're going to be taken away. What's going to stand are the things that are for eternity, the spiritual things that God has called us to do. And if you're a, especially if you're a parent in here this morning or a grandparent, I mean, this has great spiritual significance, not just for your life, but for literally generations of your family. When you make a stand for Christ and you make a stand for what God is telling you to do, and you walk that out, you take that step of faith, and when God says something, you react and you do it, you are setting yourself up and your family up and your grandkids and your great-grandkids for generations of spiritual blessings. One of the things that, it's like a pet peeve of mine, that um, when I hear somebody say, well, my, you know, this, this or that happened in my, my family, there's just a generational curse on my family. And I'm not, those things are true. I'm not saying they're not true. But, but nowadays, like, I, I, when I hear that, and this will sound weird, but I almost get excited about that. I almost championed the fact, okay, that's great. Your family has a generational curse on you. Because here's here's why I think that's important. Here's why I so-called get excited about it. Because if you understand that your family has a generational curse on you, you also have to understand that that the opposite is true. That you have the authority to change that and turn that generational curse into a generational blessing. You can't have it both ways. Exodus 20, verse 5 and 6, the Bible says, You shall not bow down to, down to them nor serve them. For I, am, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the inequity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy 
to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. Ezekiel 18, verse 19. Yet you say, why should the son not bear the guilt of the father? Because the son has done what is lawful and right and has kept all my statutes and observed them. He shall surely live. If there's a generational curse in your family, right here, these two scriptures should prove to you that you do not have to accept that. The only time that you have to accept that is if you make a choice to own that generational curse yourself. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you have the authority in Christ to turn that around for it to a generational blessing so that your kids, your grandkids, your great-grandkids don't have to deal with maybe some of the things that you've had in your family. Now that you're aware that you have this power, you can change that in an instance. I'm not saying it's, it's, it's easy, but you have the authority to do that. Number three, point number three, the power of God's shaking. Verse 25, for if they did not escape who refused him, who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. Whose voice then shook the earth. Sometimes we try to be so spiritual and we try to be such committed Christians and we try to dig in so hard because we're so concerned about hearing that still, small voice. And that is true. And there are times to do that. But what I would submit to you this morning is that there's many other times in your life, probably the majority of the time, that God is not speaking through that still, small voice, that he is screaming at you. He's shouting at you with a voice that will not only shake the heavens, but a voice that will shake your life. There's power in the shaking. And I see I just lost like 75% of you. But stay with me. There's power in the shaking. Because for any of you that are thinking, I've got all this stuff going on in my life. I have all this shaking going on in my life. And God's not speaking to me. I would tell you this, that if you believe you're experiencing a shaking in your life and things are crumbling around around you, I'm telling you, that is a surefire sign that God is speaking to you, he's speaking into your life, and he's trying to get your attention. And there's many times, remember, God, God speaks, God makes things happen, God creates, God gives life, and many times as he's building our life, what does a builder do if they're building a building or building a structure? A lot of times you have to set the stage and remove the debris. You have to remove some things that are already on that property, get them out of the way, throw them away because they're not needed. How many times in our life are we dragging things around, we're almost held up in bondage, these things, and we're hanging on to them so tight? Well, if you're hanging on to them so tight, it's probably a sign that God is telling you to let go because they don't belong to you. They belong to somebody else. If we're doing what God's called us to do, we won't be hung up in bondage. We won't be walking around with our hands tied behind our hat back, our handcuffed. We'll be taught walking around being fulfilled, being a life full of joy, being a life with peace. So if God's shaking you, it means he's, he's probably speaking to you. He's realigning some things. He's putting things back together before they can grow. My son was in, our middle son, when he was in first grade, he broke his arm. And he had like a, we took him to the hospital, he had like a, you know, it was broken, the bone was still in the skin, obviously, but there was, you know, like a little hump or a step, we would call it. Well, the doctor can't just leave that there, right? He's been wounded. Something's been broken. It's out of line. It's not working. That has to be put back together before it can grow. 
that has to be realigned. That has to be, has to be set in motion, so to speak, before it can go forward. If he wouldn't have got that fixed, if he wouldn't have got it realigned, if he wouldn't have got it cleaned up, he'd still be walking around today with, with an arm that's, that's out, of, out, of, out of joint or broken still. It would heal improperly. God needs to set us straight, realign us sometimes. It was actually the first time that my son, I kind of figured out that his personality, had, he had some personality traits like I do because sometimes I'm like a just... Just get it done. I mean, we, why, what's, there's nothing to talk about. You know what you need to do? Just do it, right? I mean, we, we're talking about it. We're wasting time. Just do it. Well, he was in the, he was in the uh, hospital room, and, you know, he was six or seven at the time, and, you know, so the few nurses come in and say, hey, guy, buddy, how you doing? You know, you doing okay? You, you want a Sprite or anything or some ice chips? The next person, went, hey, buddy, how you doing? Good to see you. Uh, do you, you want a Popsicle? What flavor do you want, you know? And then finally, like, it was like the third or fourth nurse or doctor, whoever came in, hey, buddy, you want to, you know, how you doing? Yeah, uh, you, you want a popsicle? What flavor? You want a soda? Well, what can we get you? Are, are you doing okay? And he says, no, I'm not doing okay. Would somebody come in here and fix my arm? <laughs> Sometimes we kind of need to be like that ourselves. Sometimes we mask the pain. We mask what's broken. We mask what really needs to be helped, right? We walk, we walk into a place like church, hey, how you doing? Man, it's, I am doing awesome. Man, if I was any better, I, I don't even know where I'd be. Well, really, I'm never going to be able to help myself if that's my attitude. If everything's okay and I never want to deal, I'm going to be walking around dragging things by me, by, behind me. I'm going to be walking around with a limp. I'm going to be walking around with all this baggage that God is never going to be able to, to use me. And sometimes we say, you hear people say, well, you know, the, yeah, boy, yeah, I'm just in a real funk, real, the devil's, the devil's really stopped me to this. Boy, I've been trying to do this and devil slams the door in my face every time. That may be true, but I would say that the devil is not stopping you from doing anything. What he is doing is he's distracting you, and once you get distracted, you're stopping yourself from the one voice that really matters. It's voices and choices. The devil's not following you around. Because he doesn't have to. It's a little distraction here. It's a little distraction there. And then he says, okay, as soon as I've got Mike distracted, I'm on to something else. As soon as I've, as soon as I've got Mike, his eyes are off Jesus. It's like the old story, like Peter walking on water, right? Everybody gives Peter a hard time for, for drowning. Well, first of all, Peter was the only dude that got out of the boat, right? So right there, he should get some credit. He's the one guy that got out of the boat because he was focused on Jesus. And where was his downfall? His downfall was when he got distracted and he looked away from Jesus. So in Peter's moment, the voice of Jesus didn't let him down. In our lives, when something goes wrong, in my life, Jesus didn't let me down. I lost focus. I got distracted. I looked away. I made a choice in my life to not trust and obey. I made a choice in my life to listen to another voice. And again, how does God speak to you? I don't know. That's a relationship between you and Christ. And my goal today is to convince you with beyond a shadow of a doubt that God speaks in your life. When God speaks, things happen. When God speaks, things are created. When God speaks, it brings life to a situation. It does not bring death. You'll never find that in any situation. You'll never find that in any scripture. You will never be able to back that up. When God speaks, it's always good. 
I will give you one little hint to put yourself in a position for God to speak to you. And, and let me back up one second. If you, believe, if you believe me this morning, and again, don't believe me, just believe those scriptures we read, that God is speaking, we always have to put ourselves in a position to, be, to hear God. We always have to be in a position where we're preparing ourselves. We're not waiting around, waiting for God to speak. We're preparing ourselves. We're spending time with God. We're reading the Word. We're preparing ourselves to hear and identify God's voice. And I've come to the realization that that preparation stage in my own life never ends. That no matter what season I'm in, a peak, a valley, an up or down, everything's going, everything may be going great, but I've come to learn that I am, even in those seasons, I am still in a season where I am preparing myself to be used by God. But here's a tip. If you want to be a person that God is speaking, make sure you're surrounded by people, a group of friends a group of people that influence you, make sure you are surrounded by people that God speaks to them as well. This is one of the... the, the, Sorry, I'm trying not to get into this because this this is one of the keys of life, right? If The old saying like, show me the five people closest to you and I will show you your life. I mean, that is 100% true. If If you look at the people around your life and the direction their life is going, and the type of people they are, and what God's doing through them, good or bad, you are probably going to be a compilation of what's going on there. It's almost impossible to stick out like a sore thumb. If, you, if, you, if the people you're surrounding yourself with are not Christians, let's say, it's going to be real hard for you to be a Christian. And don't tell me that you're spending time, spending time with those people, an absorbent amount of time with people, because God has called you to minister to those people. That's that's not an answer. Now, don't take that out of context, but I'll fight you on that one, though. (laughs) But you you have to surround yourself with people that God's speaking. I'll give you a great example, and I hate to talk good about this guy, but, but Pastor Matt is a great example of this. Pastor Matt, I bet you on a daily basis, If I'm exaggerating, it's every other day. But at least, let's say on a daily basis, he is calling me saying, Mike, you won't believe what God is telling me now. You won't believe what God has downloaded for us now. You won't believe what God is showing us now. Right, Pastor Guy? He probably gets the same phone calls and texts. I don't even have to tell Pastor Katie about it. He lives with that crazy guy. Right? And it's so funny, because every once in a while I'll say, man, that, that, that's a great idea. Let's do, that for the, let's do that in our church. But what if we did these two things to make it even better? And Pastor Matt always says something, the same thing. He's like, you know what? That's a great idea. And that would work. But we're probably not going to do it. And I'm like, what do you mean we're not going to do it? You just said it was a great idea. He'll say, yeah, it is a great idea. But all I can tell you is that's not the way God told me to do it. Now, that should have gotten a bigger response than I just got. I'm telling you right now. And sometimes I even, Pastor Katie, don't tell him I said this. Sometimes when he calls me with these, I almost like, because I'm so like motivated and inspired about what he tells me, I'm, I almost like do it on purpose. I'm like, yeah, that sounds good, but what if we did this? And he's all, every time, he's always like, nope, that's not what God told me. I mean, that's a way to live, right? And then, you, and then people from the outside wonder, they look and say, boy, uh, boy, that Live Church X, it's really doing great. It's really growing. They got another campus in Jerseyville. They got this. Boy, how lucky are they? Well, I'm telling you, this has nothing to do with luck. This happens because we have pastors like Pastor Matt and Pastor Kay that when God speaks, it's not question, there's not a committee, there's not a bunch of arguments. It's just that's what God said and we're going to do it. Now, for my own life, I am in awe, and I'm going to make myself look bad after I just propped him up, but I am in awe of how many times God has worked in my life, time after time after time. 
testimony after testimony after testimony. I am also, unfortunately, in awe at how many times God still speaks to me, and my first gut reaction is hesitation or a question, or I hate to say this, maybe even ignorance, and maybe I think, I think I heard that, but if God really said that, I'm sure he'll tell me again. We all have these moments where we can look back and say, man, God came through every time. But we also all have these moments where we question. But we need to get to the point where we're convinced that when God tells us something, we do it. I end with this last Bible story. Pastor Guy, you can come up. This is one of my favorite Bible stories of all time. And it's really stupidly simple. But I like a lot of stupidly simple stuff. Right? Kind of like my example, if you get the first commandment right, the rest almost fall in line if you're really doing the first one right. And here's another little tip, I guess, to how to interact with God or when God, voice, God tells you to do something, what your response should be. John chapter 2, verse 1, On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. So they ran out of wine, and the servants are all, they don't know what to do. We run out of wine, we run out of wine. In our own life, to give you context, this is what it sounds like. I don't know what to do. I'm in trouble. I, I can't, I'm in this situation I don't have answers for. I'm starting to have some anxiety over it. Maybe I have a period of depression. I don't know what my calling is. I don't know what God's called me to do. I don't know, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go from here. Here's what Mary says to the servants, and here's what our answer is today. Verse 5, his mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Whatever he says to you, do it. And in James 1.22, it says, be doers, of the, be doers of the word, not hearers of the word. Be doers of the word, not just, hearer, not just hearers of the word. But that, that verse doesn't end. Then there's a comma, and then it says, deceiving yourselves. What's the point? The point is, if I read this Bible, and again, this isn't my theory, it's a scripture I just read. If I read this Bible, if I hear what it's saying, and I never do anything about it, I'm deceiving myself. And I don't know about you, but I don't ever want to be deceiving myself. I want to, be, I want to live my life with courage and faith that, again, when my time is gone here, it says, somebody can say to me, God told Mike Lemp X, Y, Z, and it was so. And that's a life we can all live because I don't know what situation you're in. I don't know where, what, what, what circumstance you're in, the things you're dealing with, but I do know. I do know beyond a shadow of a doubt because the Bible tells me that if you take direction from Jesus Christ, your creator, for your life, the best is yet to come.
Well, I thank you. I thank you for listening to me as I preach to myself. And one more parting tip or piece of advice, I guess. Because sometimes if you're like me, you're like, well, I don't understand, God, what you're telling me. Here's what you can do. You can take a couple things that you do understand, what God is telling you to do, and you can just do those things. Because then what happens when you start to move forward and you start to listen and you start to take action on what you do understand, before you know it, you're going to start moving forward on things that you don't understand, but God told you to do it. And I go back to the question that I kind of said at the beginning. Are you flourishing in your life? Are you at peace with your life? Do you have joy? Are you thriving? And I hope after today's message, you may not be able to answer those questions any more clearly, but you do know where to get the answers to. Because when we listen to the voice of God, I'm telling you, all those questions that I just proposed, they can all be answered. And any other question that you do come up with with your life always has an answer, always has a solution, and it's in the almighty Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Father, we just thank you. Lord, we thank you for your word today. Lord, we thank you that you are a speaking God. And Lord, we thank you that you are a God that speaks directly to us. And we, we thank you that you are a God that when you speak in our lives, you make things happen. And when you speak, you create things that aren't ever there, that are invisible. You create them out of nothing. And when you create things in our life, that you give us life. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you. Have an awesome Sunday and have a blessed week.